by simply taking a rod and heating it up and pulling it apart so it comes down together. That's the first thing. If you want to do it online, if you want to do it under control, you don't want to pull it out and have that spread. The idea here is not to simply make two points. The idea is under control. Keep rotating, stretching, rotating, stretching. Not this, you know, stop. Okay, so once you get to that point, the second, um, base, the second basic skill is the butt seal. Now, a lot of people think a lot of different things about butt seals, but let me tell you, butt seals are more complicated than you think. So the idea here is that when you're apart, and say you have two pieces of glass like this, when you seal them together, you want to seal at the tiniest point you can possibly seal, and sit there and rotate and let the glass fill in from behind instead of bunching up. Now, when you have two ends like this that you're joining together, what you want to do is actually join them on the corner as tiny a joint as you can make and with heat, stay in one position, heat, and let the glass fill in behind it. The reason that you're doing this, not so much now, but for when you're doing other projects, whenever you create a surface on glass, you can never destroy that surface. It's always there. So that's what gives you gather lines in the furnace because the chemistry of the surface is ever so slightly different from anything that is below the surface. So here we have one surface, but we also now have two surfaces. But wait a minute, we have another surface which is the same as this one, but we have another surface here. So when we seal this together, we're actually dealing with one, two, three, same surface. So we're dealing with three different surfaces for these back together. So if you heat it up and you just stick it back together, you'll notice that you put it together, there'll always be a line there. And if you ever go to stretch that, it will stretch you to a big blob right in the line. Well, that's because there's another surface there, there's a former surface area that is cutting all the way through the rod. So if you join at a very tiny point, you are minimizing that surface area and you are moving those surfaces out to the outer surface. So they're not cutting across the rod. Now this is really important if you're doing a repair, for example, and the piece is colored. And you, you know you don't want that, that line to be there. So if you start at the corner and work that in, you can have the glass work in. You're able to pull a much smoother surface than you can any other way. So people take buck seals for granted, but again, always practice them. You want to join them. I'm a little bit shaky now, but you want to join them really tiny, and then just allow the glass to flow in behind it. That'll give you a nice, pretty seal. So anyway, the second basic skill, once you've taken the rods apart, is to simply butt seal it back together. And work on getting your butt seal as clean as you can. Now you're pointing you at that point or you're just Nah, I'm just kind of hanging out letting the glass do its thing. But you really want your, your butt seal to be as clean as you can make it. Now in my shop, I, I do the same thing. I have lights that run perpendicular to my flame. And that way I can see the reflection of the light in the rod. And I can see where it's wavering. I can see where it's off a little bit. But if you get it looking that good, that's fine. You know? But the idea is to think about how you're putting it together. Don't just stick them together. Because there's more going on in any seal than needs to be out. I mean, that's important. Okay, so the next skill is simply a Maria. Now, Maria, if you're, if you're teaching people or if you have people coming up underneath you and you're wanting to learn hand skills, again, Maria is another uh, diagnostic tool that I use when I'm teaching. I get people to go through all of these so I can see where the problem is. The Maria will tell you if your hands are not rotating at the same speed. They will tell you if they're not rotating on the same axis, so on and so forth. So there's a lot to be learned. So all I'm going to do is heat it up and I'm just going to push it together and make Maria. Why is it called a Maria? I have no idea. And some guy called it a Maria. Now the thing with a Maria is you don't want to just get the glass hot and push it together. You want to get to where you can push it together as you're turning it. The reason being, for example, when I made the lid for the goblet, there's no way to get a ring hot enough where you can just simply get it hot and then push it together. And so you really want to have that skill to where you can rotate and push all at the same time. Now obviously nobody's going to buy a Maria on a stick. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to add a little decoration to Maria before, before I head on.
Now keep in mind, this was an icicle of Christmas ornament that I made that I got to the point where I could never make enough of them. Okay, they're a six minute project, basically six bucks a piece wholesale, and I was making my money, you know, at 10, 10 an hour, or 10 pieces an hour, but I had a complete order for them. I could never make enough, so there was, there was never. So the thing was, was that for me, it's like, okay, here's an opportunity to test and practice every single skill, you know, that's fundamental. And uh, so when I was stopped doing production one day, I decided, okay, today I want to do tough. I didn't have to worry about whether my hands were in tune. I didn't have to worry about whether my fundamentals were there. They were there. And so just because I was stopped one day to make cups, I was making cups. But then the next day I might be right back to production. The idea of having your hands, you know, tuned up and, and really ready to go is that you, if you want to take a day to have fun, then you don't have to worry about taking a day to warm up and changing gears and all of that. I mean, your hands are ready to go. So I got to be where I'd make about 50 of these a day. You know, and I figured out it was a $300 a day. And I was okay with that. And then I'd go mow the yard or whatever. So, you know, outside the pipe market, other markets do exist. And one of the reasons I talk about Christmas ornaments is that if you stop and think about it, it's just a logical thing to add to your production line. Because there's a lot of people who use pipes, and there's a lot of people who celebrate Christmas, but there's also a lot of people who celebrate Christmas and some pipes. <laughs> so you're, you're crossing markets in a logical way. You're not just reaching out and hoping that something happens. You're actually building into what is my market that I can come to. Well, that seemed like a good idea to me. And there might be a lot of pipe people who want a Christmas ornament as a gift. There might be a lot of Christmas people who just somebody well, you know, God, who does God love this? You know? And so to me, I was always looking for ways to overlap my markets without having to use either one or the other. 